trillions of gallons are draining into the oceans. Sea levels are rising. It's happened before in the planet's past, and it's happening again now. It's not a question of will sea level rise a large amount. It's only a question of how fast that will occur. How will humans fight back as sea levels rise foot by foot, inundating our cities? Holding off the sea will be the major employer of the world by 2100. Massive levees to defend our coastlines. Floating towns and cities. Vast dams connecting continents. Earth underwater, our greatest challenge yet. New York in the 24th century. Sea levels have risen by 120 feet. Manhattan is flooded. What could cause such a terrifying scenario? The danger comes from here, Antarctica. The world's seventh continent has vast amounts of frozen water. Some of Antarctica's ice sheets are more than two miles thick. Unlike the floating sea ice of the Arctic, this ice would raise sea levels if it melted. And the ice has started to melt. Scientists from around the world want to know how much frozen water the continent actually holds, and by how much global sea levels would rise if all of this ice melted. Specially equipped aircraft send radar beams deep into the ice, reflecting off the bedrock and measuring the depth of the ice sheets. After hundreds of flights, they calculate that Antarctica contains over 90% of the world's ice. Together with Greenland, it's enough to raise global sea levels by an astonishing 230 feet. This is what North America would look like if all of the planet's ice melted. And this is Europe. London's famous Tower Bridge would become a solemn monument in the sea. The German capital, Berlin, would be flooded, as would Paris in northern France. But how likely is such a scenario? Is sea level rise reality or myth? Professor Peter Ward is a paleontologist and astrobiologist. He's written extensively on the history of life on Earth. Ward's on a journey of discovery. He wants to figure out what would happen to our planet if sea levels rise foot by foot. Somebody give me a zip here. The journey begins at the Florida Keys, a chain of islands south of Miami. He's looking for clues from the past that may help to predict the future of our planet. All right, guys, you want to go swimming? You ready? Just a few feet below sea level are banks of coral. Coral banks like this have been at this location for over 4,000 years. During this period, sea levels have been stable not just in Florida, but around the world. Who's going swimming with me? Come on, boys. <laughs> but it hasn't always been like this.
A few hundred yards from the shore, Peter visits an abandoned quarry that reveals some startling evidence from the past. Oh yeah, beauty. Nice. Look at this dude. Sitting right in growth position, grew straight up. Very nice. I came here at a very young 23 years of age. Our professor brought us to this quarry and said, this is a perfect reef, and it is. Look at this big coral sitting right in place. This is how corals grow straight up. And not very far offshore from us, we have these same corals living in place. And these things have to live in at least 10 feet of water. So we're sitting here. There's not been any volcanism. Nothing has lifted Florida up. How could you get this coral this high up in the air now, unless you had sea level, at least another 10 feet above this? It was the first indication to me that sea level, which I knew had gone down and come up, but I had never thought that it could be higher than it is now. If the same happened again, our coastal cities would be inundated. Sea level rise is not a myth. It could happen again, just as it's happened before in the planet's past. Seventy thousand years ago was the beginning of the most recent ice age. The ice sheets expanded, the planet's land mass grew and sea levels fell. Then temperatures rose again, the ice receded, sea levels went back up and eventually settled at today's coastlines. But global temperatures are on the rise again. This time because we are burning huge amounts of fossil fuels. They produce CO2, a greenhouse gas that heats up our atmosphere. Whenever global temperatures go up, so do sea levels. We have emitted uh, so much carbon dioxide uh, that the amount of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere has increased by about one third in the last hundred years and it is now higher than any time since at least a million years. We expect about uh, three, four, even five degrees centigrade warming in this century. The warmer it gets, the faster the sea level rises. That means uh, sea level rise will get faster and faster as we heat up the planet more. Of course, predicting future sea level rise is difficult, as the planet has never before experienced the dramatic increase in CO2 of the last hundred years. But Professor Ramstorff's climate model predicts a maximum six-foot sea level rise this century as higher temperatures kick in. One city that would face inundation this century is Miami in southern Florida. It's built just a few feet above sea level and has virtually no defenses against a rising ocean. After one foot of sea level rise, these beaches would be regularly flooded at high tide. After two feet, many roads would be inundated. After three feet, if a hurricane struck, the surging water would overcome sea defenses and cause flooding deep inland. By now, much of the region's coastal real estate would be ruined. We are looking at millions and millions and millions of dollars of real estate here. And we can assume that every one of these things is a half billion to a million bucks. We've got a hundred here, we've got a hundred, we've got a billion dollars in a very short area through here. So our billion dollars of houses, we get one meter, three feet of sea level rise, and every single one of these houses is useless. Who's gonna buy them? What happens to this billion dollars of real estate by the time we get three feet? I mean, it's gone, it's useless. It's just, you, you scrape it off with bulldozers and you just let, leave it here, that's what'll happen. It'll just be left here. Not just residential properties will be affected. 
think of all the wharves and all the places where ships offload and onload all the goods and services. And if sea level rises even three, four, five feet, every single one of those ports has to be replaced. The cruise ship lines, there are billions, billions of dollars of infrastructure that even a small sea level rise takes out. You gotta rebuild it all over again. After four feet of sea level rise, electricity supplies would be affected as some coastal power plants are flooded. After five feet, some of Florida's fresh water supply would be contaminated with seawater, and the Everglades National Park becomes a vast bay. After six feet, millions of climate refugees will have packed up and left the state. So what's gonna happen to Florida? By 2100, we'll be at least four to six feet higher. So this tide, which is not a high tide, will be about here, uh, up to here. There's no way that, that uh, we can keep the sea back as it rises. Miami-Dade County will be severely diminished. By 2100, after six feet of sea level rise, this is what Miami would look like. There's no way to prepare for this. You can't put levees around the kind of sea level rises we're in for. We're a city that's only a little over 100 years old. We, we became a town, an incorporated town in 1896, so we're not that old. But we may not make it for the next 100 years. The only way to prevent the flooding of Miami would be the construction of a hugely expensive system of levees surrounding